So today we're taking a look at the basics of asset management and more specifically asset management for Airtable and even more specifically how to save on storage space for attachments that you attach to your records. So yeah, hi, if you're new here, my name is Alex and here on this channel we talk about anything and everything, Airtable, automation, AI, you name it, we do it. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. First and foremost, I'm going to show you how the whole system works. Then I'm going to take you through the design of the database, although there is not much to say about this. But then towards the very end, I'm going to show you how you can set this up yourself on Airtable using make.com. So yeah, stick around for that if you're uh, interested. So let's jump right in. What we have is just a basic setup where I have a project and I have some project assets related to that project. And those assets are quite big, like this is a 100 megabytes video file and this is a big 10 megabyte TIFF. So what I want to do is I want to press the archive button and what this will do, it will immediately create an archive file link over here while also at the same time replacing this attachment that takes up a ton of space with a basic dummy file that weighs virtually nothing we're just waiting for this thing to kick in and here we go so what we have here is a link to that file as soon as i press it i am taken straight into that file to see it now behind the scenes uh, the automation also created a project file just a few seconds ago if i jump in i can see that file let's do the same thing for the other file and yep now we're just waiting for this to also be archived takes a few seconds there we go we also have now archived this other file there you go and if i jump into my folder you can see that this is like almost 10 and this is about 110 megabytes so yeah let's jump straight into the design of the database and how that was set up so the database design is actually quite simple there's really not much going on we just have a table for projects i have a project name i have an archive url the reason why i need that is because i want to be able to have some kind of link straight to all the files of that project that are stored within google drive and that's why we need to have somewhere to store that then we also have a link to the project assets just the link field super straightforward nothing really to see there and then we have our actual assets we need to have an attachment file we need to have a link back to the project which gets created automatically depending on where you create that link from but ultimately we also have our archive trigger and then we also have uh, again a simple single line text field just to store the share link for that particular file nothing more nothing less that was it in terms of database let's jump straight into automation now right before we jump into the automation bit i would like to ask if you're not subscribed please help us reach the goal of 1000 subscribers that we are desperately trying to achieve at this point in time if you can that would be legendary thank you so much now let's see what the automation side of this thing entails so first and foremost if you have been following the channel even for a video or two you probably know by now that i trigger stuff the same way i begin my automations exactly the same way and that is through going into automations creating a new automation when a record matches conditions and right now our condition is that the archive field is tick marked and then we run the, exactly the same script that looks somewhat like this and the only thing that you need to change from this script is the webhook that you get from make.com also last but not least the other thing that we need to change is we need to add an input variable call it exactly like I have done right here, record underscore ID and follow the capitalization as well. And don't forget to map the Airtable record ID using this blue button, just map this Airtable record ID in there and that's it. Once you're finished, just press finish editing, turn the automation on and you're done with your trigger. Now, the next step is of course make and I will explain what happens here in detail. So it looks complicated, but it actually isn't. All I'm basically doing is I'm getting my data 
over in this first section. I am then searching Google Drive to see if that project folder exists or not. If it doesn't exist, I create it and I add the share link to the project and then I upload my file. Alternatively, if I find the folder during my search operation here, then I continue to upload the file, get the share link and update my file with said share link. So yeah, as soon as the trigger happens, I'm just gonna take you through the whole process here. As soon as the trigger happens, we receive the record ID of that record. Then we proceed with getting that file. And as you can see, I basically have this here. Now the table is actually called something else. There we go. It should be called product assets. But yeah, essentially I'm getting the record that triggered the whole process. And then I'm getting the project that is related to that particular file, to that asset, like so. Finally, I am then getting that file via the get a file HTTP module. Now you have to be careful here because depending on your subscription to make your file limit will vary. I had to actually upgrade in order to do some of the testing prior to shooting the video. So yeah, make sure that you're on the correct subscription plan with make.com because this might throw you an error. If you're on the very lowest of plans, you probably need to upgrade in order for you to process larger files like, you know, 100, 500 megabytes, a gigabyte, and that sort of thing. So yeah, you can't live without this module and you might need to upgrade. Then I'm actually searching my Google Drive to find that particular folder. And the way that I'm actually naming my folder, so I'm going to skip a little bit here. So when I'm creating a folder, I'm actually creating the folder in a set location, but I'm including the name of the project, a dash, and then the ID, the record ID of that project, so that it kind of looks like this, essentially. Once it comes to actually uploading another file, when it comes to the search of that folder, all I'm doing here is retrieve the folders, search within folder names. My query is just the ID, search for name containing the search term. That's it and no limits. That then will bring the folder if it exists or not or vice versa. If it doesn't exist, as I've already shown, I'm creating that folder initially. Also, one thing that I forgot to mention here is that I'm triggering the share folder reader, anyone. You can restrict this if you want, but right now this is set to anyone. Add share link. So then this is what I'm basically printing back into Airtable against that project. I'm just mapping in the web view link. That's all you have to do. And then finally, I'm doing the typical upload a file where I'm getting that file from my HTTP module that we talked about earlier into the folder that I've just created. Very crucial. Finally, I'm getting the share link, again, from the file that I've just uploaded, module number 33, reader, anyone, that's basically it. I'm just getting that. And then I'm finally updating my asset record within Airtable with the following. So number one, share link goes inside of the file URL. And that creates almost like a broken attachment. But it, the most important thing is that it always works and it's much lighter, considerably lighter than the original attachment. This is like, if I'm not mistaken, about eight kilobytes. So nothing in terms of weight. And finally, what you need to do is just jump in and use the same share link, but just print it now inside of the archive file link. So that's, that's basically that. Now, this bottom part does exactly the same thing. The only thing that I'm substituting is this file ID instead of fetching it from 32 like we do over here i'm actually fetching it from the results just like we have in this particular example right here right now because i actually found that folder because i created it previously i can now use that file id in my module number 38 which uploads the file then share the link and goes so forth well, one main thing that i kind of missed here but i'm just adding it now in <laughs> the conversation or rather monologue i guess it's the fact that we need to add some filters in our router. So the filters that I typically set up always, especially when it comes to being placed after a search, I always use total number of bundles equal to zero. If I want that route to act on the case where I'm not finding something, 
and of course the inverse which is not equal to zero. And I'm using text operators, you don't really have to go numerical here because it's always either going to be zero or something else. So yeah, that's the setup for the whole make scenario. So that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. So it's always a pleasure to answer any kind of comments or suggestions that you might have. So feel free to leave one down below. And yeah, uh, that's it from me. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.